So you'll have to excuse the garage because it's a little bit of a mess. I've been doing way too many projects all at the same time. I have some solar panels stacked here. My Tygos, these are the rapid shutdown devices that are required by code for roof mount solar on structures to which are not open air. So carports and solar uh, standalone arrays do not require these, but panels themselves do. So that Tygo thing right there clips right on. This is the F or 2F module. So this is a specific version. So this is the TS4A 2F. And the 2 means it connects to two panels and the F is it, it's just for fire shutdown, fire safety shutdown. This takes the voltage from the panels here and drops it down to, I believe, 0. 0.6 volts per module or six volts per module rather. Um, so that the total output of the lines on the roof are very low and non-dangerous for firefighters who might be doing a roof entry to that building. Obviously, this is a barn, and this is not really required, but code has not really caught up to language that describes the usefulness and applications for things like this. Uh, it's required. That's the only reason you got to do it, so do it. Um, some things, and I'll make a short about this directly after this video describing this. This piece of equipment here, um, this will basically take two panels. So I'll put on one panel and then the next panel won't have it, but this panel will connect to the Tygo and this panel will connect to the Tygo. And then these long runners here, those connect in series or depending on how you want to configure it to the next panel. All of the documentation about this device here, nowhere does it describe what's happening to the two panels as they interface with this device. Are they being paralleled or are they being put into series? So I spent probably about 45 minutes looking through technical documentation and I finally found it on a third party website describing how this works. So this takes the two panels and puts them in series. So then this, if you connect it in series, will continue that behavior. So if you're ever trying to do a fully paralleled system, you would have to use individual ones of these and not the 2F. So that's just, or you could actually wire it differently, but I, I would avoid that. Um, but that's just kind of uh, where we are as of right now. This is the rapid shutdown box, the communication function for it. I have these, my DC disconnects, so we're getting close on those to put in once I run those wires. These are the solar arresters for the surge, for uh, surge protection. These are the wiring for the, um, the battery bank for the additionals. Now what I am doing is I'm staging this all in here for good reason. I have now built a structure so this is rugged against my forks. So the forks are now permanently here. This is a quick disconnect so I've actually got the bucket on the tractor for another task but I will build the solar panels with their Tygos and the clips that hold the wiring down, make sure I do all my wire management and attach all of my roof mount pieces. I'm using the top speed roof mount, which I'll show you next. Um, and I'll put those on this. This will then probably lift, I would say five or six at a time up to the roof line with the tractor so that I can actually do this whole project myself. As you can see here, I have way more solar that's got to go up and some more over there. And with that, the tractor already out and ready to go. So this is just an update as to where we are today so I can keep track of it. And if anyone's curious and they're following along the project, you can also keep track of it. So here we are, roof side. I already put two panels up. I was just doing some spacing out, uh, seeing how I would kind of mechanize or operationalize this process. So this set will actually go relatively close to the edge and I'll probably have in the future use that edge clamp because these top speed um, snap and rack top speed mount features, which some people don't like because they put a ton of penetrations. They do just make it a lot easier. And realistically, as long as you use the MP1 or M1 caulking roof caulk sealant that they require for them, you're not going to get leaks. So it's just do it right and you won't have to worry. But they do make a bunch of penetrations. So for those who are concerned about that, I get it. But at the same time, um, you're going to do that with a rack mount anyway. And this specifically is a barn roof, and I just replaced part of it because it was leaky. So not a big deal there anyway. But again, I'll probably be putting this as close to the edge as I can here because then I can use the opposite side of those clips to extend what would be like a pergola over this so I can have kind of a rain shelter in the future and then have a trust aluminum 
overhang system that will basically just make this edge come a little bit further down. Just expand the array and give some shaded area outside of the barn for the little baby goats who are living their best lives to run around with. So just had four baby goats. Pretty common here to have lots of goats. It's just how we roll. Um, and the upper roof line here, I snapped the line yesterday. My chalk line was terrible and old, but that's gonna be my line where this is here. That was 21 inches from the top. There is a fire code requirement within NEC to have 18 inches from the top of the panel to the ridge. So I gave a little bit more. That will give me my 18 at the top. And then I'll have a walkway that'll be roughly this whole shingles width here all the way up to about here. So if you needed to walk in between the two double sets that run 10, so this will be 20 panels, one down there, one down here, up here, and they run all the way, and it will be exactly the same up here. I'll then put my junctions on the roof here, and that box will accommodate for all four strings. So each one of these will be a parallel, or yeah, uh, a paralleled string, um, and I mean a series string rather, I'm sorry, a series string, a series string. So then you have two here on the top, series string, a series string, two in the bottom. And then I will duplicate the exact total onto this side. So you have the two up the top, two down the bottom, same junction box, they'll all go down. And the room with the batteries is down in there. I'll go show you where that's at right now because I don't think I've done an update on that in a hot minute. So let's climb down this ladder. This is OSHA approved videotaping, of course, because three points of contact at all times. And so there's my solar that's got to go onto the roof. It's just been patiently waiting for me. This room's a little bit of a mess because I still have to pick up three batteries, which I just don't have the manpower for here. This battery, that battery, and this battery, these are all batteries that go up top. So that'll go there, here, and here, you can see that's the plate that it goes onto. It just hangs there. Um, and so this will be the clusters of inverter one, which will be the furthest string. And I'll put labeling so it'll have a little icon of the roof and it will show which strings go to which inverter. So this inverter will only have one of, or two strings, but that lower angled roof. This, and it will have these three batteries. This inverter will have that next more steep pitched roof, and this will have these three batteries. Same here, we'll go to the outside on the side of the building. It'll be on the steep side. It'll be these three batteries. And this side will be the low side on that side of the building. And it will actually not, it'll only have the inverter here, and then the three batteries will go along the wall. So it'll be very organized in the way that it is structured so that it is obvious and evident how everything works. I'm gonna color code each of these unit sections so that they have their own um, determining color for which string they represent. And there'll be a number that matches that as well. I like to organize things uh, in a really particular way. So this will be really easy to identify. And if anyone else ever had to troubleshoot it for me, should I not be around, it would be exceptionally easy to explain. And you have to think about, you know, I will likely live here forever, but if I ever had to sell the house to someone else or explain it to someone else, how can you make it easy for someone else to understand? And that's a lot of what code actually dictates is how simple can you make it? Um, and there's my charge verter. That will be so if I need to additionally charge the batteries beyond what they can do from solar, I can use that device. I'll put here a service panel. That will be where I combine all of the 50 amp, 200 volt outputs from, or 220 from all of the inverters. So I'll have a 200 amp service that runs in to the house underground and it has a transfer switch at the house. Outside of this wall on the bout side is where I will put that Tygo rapid shutdown. So right here, there'll be a big sign in the Tygo box that says rapid shutdown entire solar array. And when you hit that button, these systems not only have their own individual rapid shutdowns, so I can do it per string, per inverter, per battery bank, but that one will do the entire system. And that's actually one of the really nice things about these EG4 systems, the 18K PV, and I think the 6,000K uh, 6, or 6,000 uh, PV, and a few others have a total system shutdown when combined with these types of batteries, which have their own 
breakers for that reason. So this is showing you that it's off and it is actually like thumb screw down. So this is not to be messed with. It's not like a on and off switch kind of thing. But what this will do is in a rapid shutdown event, not only stop the AC power that goes to the house, it will stop the solar at the module level. So at the solar panel on the roof, those Tygo units that I showed you inside the garage, those stop the voltage and bring it down to a safe voltage so that the wires before the, the, the termination are not hot or they're very mildly hot, they're warm. And then it also sends a signal to the batteries which throws all of these breakers so that none of the batteries can be pushing any electrical charge through their outputs. And that makes this a completely safe system. You could touch pretty much any of the electrical components within the system once you've rapid shut down and it has completed the entire process. There's a little bit of work to have to obviously set it back up once I have 12 batteries and I have to thumb screw off all these, hit all these breakers, restart the system. But for emergency purposes, the most important thing is to de-energize the system and that's what it's all about. So rapid shutdown, DIY solar project. This is all through Signature Solar. They have been outstanding with their customer service and helping me along this process and helping me build this out. Um, so I'll put a link for them and the EG4 products that I have along with those Tygo rapid shutdowns for the two, um, two panels at a, or two modules at a time. Um, and I'll put the link to the reference where I found that those Tygos are indeed in series as they combine two panels. So if anyone else is curious, that's what I found. I hope that helps. And if this was a great update for you, go ahead and give the old thumbs up.